Okay, riveting, the process. This is what this main course is about because we want you to be able to uh, be able to use one of these tools. Two different types of guns. Uh, so there's the gun that we control air via an air regulator, which would be this guy. So this air regulator here, if we turn it clockwise, like turning a tap, we turn it down or off. Uh, if we turn it counterclockwise, we allow more air to pass through, which equals more power in the gun. The, the, the throttle or the, um, the trigger can be pulled partially or fully. It, it depends on you know, how comfortable you are with the guns. But generally what they would suggest is you do a full pull and control your power via the uh, regulator. Okay. The other type, of course, is the one that has the stick that basically stops how much I can pull that uh, trigger in. So again, if I turn it clockwise, it's going to stop me from being able to pull the trigger in. So there's no movement there. And if I spin this thing out uh, counterclockwise, it's going to allow me then to pull the trigger in quite a ways. And so I control the power by adjusting how much I can pull the trigger in. And again, it would be full pull every time adjusted by the stop. Okay. Always remember, we've got to have our safety springs on there, super important. And so uh, the best way I find for putting in the countersink or mushroom head type snap is put it in position on the, on the, the spring and then run the spring in. Okay, and when you run the spring in, don't run it too deep. Just enough kind of to the bottom of the threaded portion. As soon as it starts to kind of bind, don't go any farther than that. We can take it off. It'll be nice and easy. And it's held in there, but if it tries, it can come out. So always remember, the, the mushroom head is probably the more dangerous of the two because even though it's got this latch around it that's going to supposedly stop it if you pull the trigger, you can't rely on that. It's not as good as the beehive which is what we use for our universal head snaps. And so again, uh, remember when we're talking about the universal head snaps, somewhere around this base area here, there should be some numbers. And let me have a quick look here. What does it say here? It says 4704. So this would be for a 1 8 round head or universal head rivet, right? And so look here to find out the sizing, okay? Once you've kind of got yourself set up, what you're going to want to do is go into your little box, get your uh, bucking bar, and what we're going to do is we're going to put it in the vise, okay? Have it extend out ways, which is nice, but when you put it in, uh, make sure it's in there super tight. Make sure the front surface is nice and clean and it's not damaged because it'll tattoo whatever's on the, the face here on the back of our rivet and we don't want to do that, okay? First step is to make sure you know how much power is in your gun. Okay, and so I'm going to just back that down a little bit. So I'm going to go clockwise just a tiny touch. Actually, it's not bad. Okay, so now I, I know how much power is in my gun. I'm ready to rivet. I've got my bucking bar in nice and tight. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the appropriate rivet. There it is. I'm going to put it in the hole. Okay. And then I'm going to get my gauge and I'm going to verify that I have approximately one and a half D sticking out, which is exactly what I've got. It's a nice, nice tight fit. So it's perfect. I calculated that and now I'm ready to rivet. So I'm going to make sure I got my hearing protection on properly. Got my eye protection on. So what I'm going to do is put my rivet, line everything up. So gun has to be straight with the bar. Material's got to be perpendicular. And what I'm going to do is grab the piece of material and pull like crazy this way, keeping it square so that we don't end up with any head gap. Don't want any head gap. Okay. And notice I'm not just kind of standing here with, you know, no real pressure on the gun. I've got serious body weight, I'm hunkered down and I'm, I've got some serious weight behind it so that I don't allow that tip to bounce on the top of the head, which would damage it, right? Okay, so I'm going to pull back big time, make sure everything's nice and squared up. Give it a little shot to start with. Make sure everything looks like it's setting perfectly, it does, everything looks good. Wow. Nowhere near enough power, so I've got to open this up quite a bit. More. There we go. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, finish this puppy up. Oh, much better. 
There we go. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my gauge, go to my number four for one eighth rivet. I'm going to lay it down and look at that. It's a nice, nicely flattened out rivet. In fact, it's probably a little, maybe a little tall to start with or something because it's, it's flattened down. It's got the half D, which is perfect. I wonder how accurate that that gauge is. Let's try this one looks pretty good. Yeah, okay, that's a little bit better. So you can see how a little bit of space there, but it's maybe a little over flattened, but still it's got a nice, it's got some nice depth to it. Check the condition of the head. Head's in nice shape, no skin damage, no bucktail damage, right? So it looks good. Let's put another one in. Okay. Again, put it in the hole. And get some serious weight behind it. Here we are. Make sure I'm super stable. Everything's nice and square. A little shot to start with. Finish it up. Okay, and once again, ooh, that one's getting probably a little on the flat side, so um, maybe a little bit too much. Okay, so now that's our standard universal head snap, right? And so let's put in a countersink. So we're going to be using the other rivet gun so we can control power from uh, how much we're allowed to pull the trigger in. Step one, check the power. That seems pretty good. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is get the appropriate rivet. Okay, put it in the hole. Okay, that's good. Hold it in there. I'm going to do my quick check to make sure height wise. Yeah, look at that. That's uh, just about perfect. So that's good. Okay, so this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my thumb as a stabilizer. I'm going to put my thumb right along the edge of the uh, mushroom head to stop it from running all over the place. Because if I don't end up with this perfectly squared, when I pull the trigger, it's going to want to run away on me. Okay, so what I'm going to do, get it centered over top of the head of the rivet, get my thumb along the edge of the, uh, the rivet set, the mushroom head. I'm going to bring it up against the material. And again, big time body weight behind the, the rivet gun. Pull back like crazy on the skin. Give it a little touch, have a little look. Everything's starting to look good. Okay, and sometimes what I suggest is just a little bit of a, this kind of emotion. That was dramatic. But what it does is it makes sure you kind of tuck all the edges in on your uh, rivet, um, just to make sure that head, make sure that that rivet head, wow, it's perfectly flush. It is super nice. Okay, that looks really good. I get my gauge again. There's my half D. And look at that, just about perfect. I don't think this is the one I like all that much. Let's have a look here. Four, that looks a little better. Okay, and so there you can see how it's at least half D, which is perfect. Nicely formed, nice and clean, skin not damaged. So that's really good. Let's put another one in. Okay, again, drop that in the hole. Always make sure that that head is perfectly flush because if it's not to start with, you're never going to be able to push it in the hole and make it flush. Okay, big time body weight, pull back like crazy. Little touch to start with. Okay, let's have a look. Oh, perfect head there. Maybe a little high. Let's have a look. Oh no, it's just about, again, just about a perfect head. So if I was running into that, that would mean it's too tall. I'd have to hit it a little bit more. Um, if, if it's a pancake, well, that's no good either, right? So then we'd have to take the rivets out. So that's what you want to do. You want to put in some universals and you want to put in some countersink rivets on the sheet so that you get a chance to do some riveting, okay? Hopefully this is a good starting project. This doesn't count for marks. This is just practice. The next project is going to be the one that counts for marks. So get some experience, okay? Good.